Well, today on 12 News Now at 4, we are joined by Rhode Island Education Commissioner Angelica Infante-Green. She joins us regularly here on 12 News at 4. Commissioner, thanks for being with us on this Friday. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Kim. So I want to start with the big news of the day, which is, of course, the RICAST test scores, which were released this morning. The scores still only show that a quarter of Rhode Island third through eighth graders can do math at grade level and less than a third can read and write at grade level. These can't be the numbers that you want to see. No, absolutely not. I think we saw with our NAEP results that the whole nation was impacted and we follow the national trends. So this is not what we want to see. Um, the good news is that what we did see in math is that our students are recovering. We had almost a seven point gain in math, um, similar to Massachusetts, who had a six point gain in math. So we see that we are actually headed in the right direction. So we're really excited about that. I think, um, but we are nowhere where we want to be. Um, so that is something that we will keep pushing and looking and um, keep moving in that direction. In ELA though, there was a little bit of a, a decline, a 2% decline. Massachusetts had a five point decline, which makes sense. We already knew this from our LEAP that our younger kids we're going to struggle. And that's where we see it in the younger grades, in the earlier grades, because those are the kids that learned to read during the pandemic. So it stands to reason that that would be the case. And also, you know, a lot of districts are implementing new curriculum. It takes three to five years to implement a curriculum. So we've, we've seen that. So we expected that. So we are pleasantly surprised about the math that we're headed in the right direction. And there's some districts that, um, keep moving forward and we still see last year we saw some growth in some of the districts and we continue to see that this year. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Providence in particular because we know the state uh, is in charge of running that district right now and, and I know you mentioned that curriculum takes three to five years to really see the difference. I know you've implemented some new curriculum there. Yeah. Is that why we're not seeing improvement yet because it, it takes multiple years? It takes multiple years, absolutely. And not just in Providence. So you know that there is a statute that we, um, a regulation that we everybody has to have new curriculum, um, standard-based curriculum. So it's not just in Providence, it's across the state. Math, we have been more steady. We've had that curriculum for longer and we see that increase. I'm just um, happy to see that the, the the decline in Providence was just one point in terms of literacy, and we saw an increase in math. So it's followed the state trend. They actually did a little better than the, the state trend. So we're, we're not at all happy. However, we're excited that we're moving in the right direction. I also wanna ask you about Central Falls. It continues to be the worst performing district in the state. Any chance that you're considering a state takeover of Central Falls schools? Well, I think we're looking at Central Falls very, very, very carefully. But one of the things that we do know is that they were one of the most impacted districts with the pandemic. We also know that the Latino students in Central Falls, if you recall, were named na nationally as the most impacted. So we expected that Central Falls was going to struggle. And um, we saw a lot of that during the pandemic. So there has to be something else that we do with Central Falls. And we are going to be meeting with the superintendent as well as the mayor and um, some of the community members to figure out what we can do to support Central Falls. Okay, we will stay tuned on that. Uh, Commissioner, I also want to ask you about the timing of the release of these scores. This has been in the headlines uh, quite a bit in, in recent weeks. And, and you've said repeatedly over the past month or so that these scores wouldn't be ready until mid-November because you only had one data analyst and you got the scores later this year from the vendor than you did last year. So what changed? So nothing has changed. So we, we have always released the scores late October, late November. So that's a window, right? So nothing has changed. And I just want to clarify, people were asking me to deliver them faster than my timeline. And I said, I only have one person. Not that we couldn't, you know, they were asking for a different timeline. We are right on time where we said, and partly what we want to do, we want to release at the same time that the parents get the information. So the 10th of November, parents are still getting their student report that day. And that is important that parents have that information. And during that student report this year, there's gonna be a QR code for the parents at the bottom where they're gonna have an individualized video of their child. It will explain, Kim, your daughter 
she is the, here, 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 so that there can be an explanation. So that's what it is. Like we are within our time frame, but we really want to release, wanted to release as close as possible to the day that the parents get the report. And they're getting that report from the vendor the 10th of November. With all due respect, though, Commissioner, I mean, you've been saying for the last month, mid-November is when these scores are going to come out. You wanted the scores to come out, like you just said, with these videos so that the parents had the data in hand. You said on the radio recently you didn't want those things to happen separately, but frankly, today they did. So I'm just curious, I mean, were you feeling any pressure to get these out before the election? Did you get any assistance with that one data analyst? I mean, it seems like something did change oh, over the past week. Well, no, no, no. So we are, we're three days. We're talking about a three day difference. That's what we're talking about because we have uh, the holidays. That's what we are um, talking about. And what I ended up having to do was double up. So I don't really scores until I meet with the superintendents. We were in a massive uh, presentation mode. We usually would take four days and we did it within two. So that's where the difference comes in. I would spend more time with the superintendent. So we did that so that we can keep moving forward. And we added new aspects to the reporting. So I, I just want to make this clear. This year, we also have the teacher's names. So principals and school superintendents can see the kids in what class did what. Teachers will also have access to the kids in their class this year, as opposed to the ones last year. So we can look for trends. That is also something that's new that we did not have. And so I, I just want to, you know, just one more question on, on the timing of the release of these scores. When did it become clear to you that you would be able to get these out uh, before the election? Well, I think what we, we did was actually the, the only thing that we did was that we had to double up meeting with the superintendents. It became clear this week. So this week we said, OK, if we double up. We had a couple of superintendents that could not attend because we doubled it up. I mean, we had four and five sessions a day that we would not normally do um, so that we can speed it up, not for political, not for anyone. Nobody has asked me to do, nobody asked me to delay it, to hold on. This is our window. And for me, the most important part is that we met with the superintendents and that parents get the information. And once again, we have, it's a span of time that we deliver things on and we give ourselves a day or two to go backwards and forwards because we, you know, things may take time. That's the way it, it happens with everything. All right, Rhode Island Education Commissioner Angelica Infante-Green, thank you for your time. Thank you.